Hey guys, Kyle Kalinske is letting us post some of the clips from his channel that we think you guys will really love in the Breaking Points community on our channel. Yep, let's get to it. So this story here is really interesting to me because of the parallels with American politics. So there's an article in Newsweek. They say French protests follow student opposition to Le Pen and Macron runoff. Wow. So again, this reminds me of Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump and how, you know, so many people hated that. Biden versus Trump, so many people hated that. They were like, really, this is the best we could do? The lesser evil of these idiot options? Now you're getting this in France, too. So uh, here's what they say. Demonstrations will take place across France on Saturday on the heels of university protests, which saw anger vented at the presidential election choice of incumbent Emmanuel Macron and far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. Police have warned there might be incidents in demonstrations against the far right, which are planned in around 30 cities across the country. Anti-Macron protests, protesters will also gather in the French capital. At the time of writing, some have already begun. The actions follow a week of protests expressing unhappiness at the result of the first round of the election on April 10th, in which no left-wing candidate made the runoff. We're going to get to more on that in a second. Le Pen, who heads the national rally, uh, Rassemblant National, I like how I did my little French accent there, Rassemblant National, got 23.1% of the vote, close behind Macron's 27.85%, Reuters reported. But on Wednesday, students who do not like either candidate started to occupy the campus of Paris's Sorbonne University, which has been the scene of many French students revolting over the years, including May 1968 uprising. The students ended their occupation of the campus after 30 hours before police stormed the building, but not before law enforcement fired tear gas outside. There were also protests at the University of Paris 8 and the École Normale Supérieure in the capital, as well as the Nancy campus of Political Sciences Institute Sciences Po, Pier, where protesters blocked the main entrance with garbage cans. The Associated Press reported that the protesters included many who voted for the far-left candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who finished one percentage point behind Le Pen in the first-round presidential vote last Sunday, but did not make the runoff. Wow, one point behind. He surged, by the way, because his polling was lower than that. Mélenchon's voter will be crucial in the second round to Macron, <laughs> I love doing this French thing, who earlier this week was only narrowly ahead of Le Pen in the polls. Uh-oh. Voters on the left see Le Pen, who heads the National Rally uh, Party, as a threat with her promise to cut immigration. Macron has faced criticism that he has drifted too far to the right. What does this remind you of? Again, this is just like what happens here when we're talking about Hillary Clinton or we're talking about Joe Biden. There's also unhappiness on the left at Macron by many who cite police brutality against yellow vest protesters and measures on what Macron calls Islamist separ separatism. Quote, we now have a second round with only two right wing candidates who are the enemies of the workers and of the youth. This is amazing, the parallels. And we can't accept that. Sciences Post student Gabrielle Verniers told the AP. Meanwhile, Anis Jacquemas, a philosophy student at Sorbonne, told Reuters, Neither Macron nor Le Pen. We're tired of always having to vote for the less bad of the two, and that's what explains this revolt. Many students have said they would rather not vote than back Macron simply as a means to stop Le Pen from winning. This contrasts with the 2002 election runoff in which Marine Le Pen's father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, founder of the far-right National Front, faced off against then-incumbent Jacques Chirac. The latter had won 82% of the vote. The prospect of not rallying behind the mainstream candidate in the runoff on April 24th is of concern to Macron's camp. Okay, so that's fascinating. Again, I'm stunned at just how much there's a parallel here between, you know, what happened with Hillary versus Trump and what happened with Biden versus Trump, the general view of the Democrats versus the Republicans. Something like 50% or more of the American public identifies as independent. And of course, a huge chunk of the American uh, population doesn't vote. Um, and so you're just, you're seeing the same sort of disillusion with the system in France. And by the way, the French system is not a two party system, you know, and even <laughs> with not having a two party system and having more choices still, when it comes down to two kind of shitty candidates, people are frustrated with that. So let's go ahead and read a little bit more here. Um, this is on Macron, his political positions. Overall, Macron is largely seen as a centrist. Some observers describe him as a social liberal, and others call him a social democrat. Uh, during his time, by the way, you know, those terms are 
somewhat contradictory. So a lot of this is is a little bit subjective in terms of how you define them. You'd have to go through their political positions and see what label you think most accurately reflects what their views are. During his time in the French Socialist Party, he supported the party's centrist wing, whose political stance has been associated with third way policies advanced by Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, and Gerard Schroeder, and whose leading spokes spokesman has been former Prime Minister Manuel Valls. Uh, Macron is accused by some members of the Yellow Vest of being an ultra-liberal president for the rich. Macron was dubbed uh, President L'Autron Richet, president of the very rich, by former socialist French president Francois Hollande. In the past, Macron has called himself a socialist, but he has labeled himself as a centrist liberal since August 2015, refusing observations by critics that he is an ultra-liberal economically. During a visit to Vendée in August 2016, he said that he was not a socialist and merely served in a left-wing government. He has called himself both a man of the left and a liberal in his book, Revolution. Macron has since been labeled an economic neoliberal with socio-cultural liberal viewpoint. Macron created the centrist political party in March in Marche with the attempt to create a party that can cross partisan lines. Speaking on why he formed formed it, he said there is a real divide in France between conservatives and progressives. His political platform during the 2017 French presidential election contained stances from both the left and the right, which led to him being positioned as a radical centrist by Le Figaro. Macron has rejected centrist as a label, although political scientist Luc Robin has compared his platform to former centrist president Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, who is the only other French president to have been elected on a centrist platform. So for the economy, uh, Macron has advocated in favor of the free market and reducing the public finance debt deficit. He first publicly used the word liberal to describe himself in a 2015 interview with Le Monde. He added that he is neither right nor left and that he advocates a collective solidarity. Um, in August 2016, he stated, honesty compels me to say that I am not a socialist. Macron explained that he was part of the left government because he wanted to serve the public interest as any minister would. Um, in his book, Revolution, uh, published in November 2016, Macron presents himself as both a leftist and a liberal, if by liberalism one means trust in man. Okay, so, uh, and then they go on to say, Macron is in favor of tax cuts during the 2017 presidential election. Macron proposed cutting the corporate tax rate from 33.3% to 25%. Macron also wants to remove investment income from the wealth tax so that so that it is solely a tax on high-value property. Macron also wants to exempt 18 million households from local residence tax, branding them as unfair during the 2017 presidential campaign. So cutting the corporate tax rate is definitely an elitist position, but cutting taxes for regular people is, is not elitist, I'd argue. That position is a populist position. Macron has advocated for the end of the 35-hour work week. Huh. However, his view has changed over time, and he now seeks reforms that aim to preserve the 35-hour work week. So I guess he wanted more hours, and then he's like, okay, let's not do that. I'm sure that's a deeply unpopular position that he took. On foreign policy, in 2017, Macron described France's colonization of Algeria as a crime against humanity. He also said, quote, it is truly barbarous and is part of a past that we need to confront by apologizing to those against whom we committed these acts. Um, polls following that <laughs> led to a decrease in his support. In January 2021, Macron stated there would be no repentance nor apologies for the French colonization of Algeria, so he flipped with the polls on that one. Uh, Macron described the 2018 military intervention in Libya as a historic error. In 2017, Macron was a young leader in the French American Foundation. Um, in January 2017, he said France needed a more balanced policy towards Syria, including talks with Bashar al-Assad. Now, at the same time, he was in favor of a French presence in Syria. That's, you know, something I've read previously. Um, so look, this guy, he's, he's sort of all over the place. He's sort of all over the place. Um, he's very pro-European Union. That's another thing that they go on to say here. And yeah, I mean, it's weird because sometimes he describes himself as a leftist, sometimes a liberal, sometimes a centrist. Um, but they do say he's more associated with, you know, a third way ideology. And so that's Macron. And again, there are similarities to, you know, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, to, very similar to that. I mean, I think in some ways he's to the left of them and maybe in some ways to the right of them. Honestly, I think on... Uh, on immigration, he's somewhat restrictionist. Here you go, migrant crisis. Speaking on refugees, and specifically the Calais jungle, Macron said on January 16th, 2018, they would not allow another refugee camp to form in Paris before outlining the government policy toward immigration and asylum. He also announced plans to speed up as asylum applications and deportations, but give refugees better housing. So yeah, like, it's weird. In some ways, he's traditional, 
you know, neoliberal, if you will. In some ways, he would be to the left of, like, Hillary and Biden, and in other ways, he'd be to the right of them. So that's his politics. Now, let's look at Marine Le Pen. Uh, political positions, immigration and multiculturalism. Le Pen and the National Front, I think, or they changed their name recently, but they advocate a tough line on immigration, believing that multiculturalism has failed. So in the U.S., when we talk about multiculturalism, we talk about um, a melting pot. This idea of like people from all different ethnicities, backgrounds, religions, etc., can come together and we can all be American. We can all be, you know, under the banner of the flag. And um, that, that is more of a uniquely American idea, though, because when they talk about multiculturalism, particularly in the European context, from what I've read about it, my understanding is they mean almost cultures living side by side. And it's almost like they're in their own little segregated pockets. So it's not really the melting pot idea as much as it's like, let's have our own own little segmented and fragmented populations with different, completely different cultures. And so she says that multiculturalism has failed. Look, I would argue the melting pot idea is a wonderful idea in principle because it makes people more tolerant, more open-minded. I mean, I grew up in one of the most diverse school districts in the entire United States. And I definitely feel like that made, made me, you know, think of bigotry as like, ridiculous like what do you mean you like you don't like somebody because of their skin color it's as silly as not liking somebody over their eye color or some shit so but she is against multiculturalism she argued for de-islamification islamization of french society le pen has called for a moratorium on legal immigration so even legal immigration she doesn't want anymore she would repeal laws allowing illegal immigrants to become legal residents and has argued that benefits provided to immigrants be reduced to remove incentives for new immigrants following the beginning of the Arab Spring and the European migrant crisis. She called for France to withdraw from the Shenzhen um, area and reinstate border control. She supports restrictions on ritual slaughter and circumcision. Low key, I will, excuse me, I will say the circumcision take is sort of based. Yeah, like circumcision is genital mutilation and we like to pretend that it's not and I don't understand that. So anyway, um, economic policy on energy. Le Pen advocates a policy of energy independence for France with a strong emphasis on support for nuclear and hydroelectric power. Le Pen is strongly opposed to wind power, proposing a moratorium on new wind energy development on both sea and land from, uh, from 2002 and eventual dismantling of all current wind turbines. Le Pen favors protectionism as an alternative to free trade. That's sort of based. She supports economic nationalism, um, the separation of investment and retail banking. So this would be the French version of what's called Glass-Steagall here in the U.S., which we used to have but don't have anymore and energy diversification, and is opposed to the privatization of public services and social security, speculation on international commodity markets, and is opposed to the common agricultural policy. Le Pen is opposed to globalization, uh, she, which she blames for various negative economic trends and opposes European Union super, super nationalism and federalism, instead favoring a loosely confederate Europe of the nations. She has called for France to leave the Eurozone and for a referendum on France leaving the EU. Uh, for, how, however, as of 2019, she no longer advocates for France to leave the EU or Euro currency. Foreign policy. On foreign policy, Le Pen has criticized, criticized Turkish President Erdogan. Uh, she also criticized the privileged relations that France maintains with countries such as Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which she said are helping to fund and arm Islamist fundamentalists, while encouraging closer ties with the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, which she said fight fundamentalism. She supported the establishment of a privileged partnership with Russia and believes that Ukraine has been subjugated by the United States. She was strongly critical of NATO policy in the region of Eastern European anti-Russian sentiment and threatened economic sanctions. In response to the 2002 invasion of Ukraine, Le Pen criticized Russia's actions despite her previous pro-Russia stance. She, had, she advocated welcoming Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war. So she's for Ukrainian refugees, not for any sort of brown-skinned refugees. Um, she has stated that if elected, she would remove France from NATO's integrated military command. And then on other issues, she describes herself as a feminist. So this, again, so this is interesting because in the U.S. you had, you know, corporate neoliberal Hillary Clinton who um, was up against the fake populist Donald Trump. And Trump, it's been proven now he was a fake populist. He governed for four years. His biggest legislative accomplishment was a giant tax cut for the rich and corporations. So that's not even debatable. In France, it looks like you have a situation where it's a similar thing again. You can compare Macron in some ways to Obama, Hillary, and he's up against Le Pen. Now, it's yet to be seen if Le Pen would be a fake populist or a real populist, but on paper, she does have some populist views like protect on protectionism, where she's like, look, free trade and globalization has sort of devastated the working class here. 
So it, I mean, look, it has shades of 2016 written all over it or shades of 2020. And see, that's the thing. It could go either way because in 2016, Hillary lost in 2020, Biden won. But the difference is Macron is president already. He's the incumbent. And so that might complicate things further. But we do have, let me show you one more thing here because we have a poll Macron grows his lead over Le Pen in the three major French tracking polls. Today's survey, Macron is plus 13 in Ipsos. He was plus 10 a week ago. Macron is plus 12 in Opinion Way. He was plus 6 a week ago. And Macron is plus 10 in IFOP. He was plus 5 uh, a week ago. So the election is Sunday. The only debate is tomorrow. So as of right now, it looks like um, Macron is pulling away a little bit. Um, we'll see if that lead is big enough to hold. Because again, in 2016, Hillary had arguably a relatively big lead on Trump and then ended up losing. But it feels a lot like the 2016 election or the 2020 election. So I could see it cutting either way. But uh, now Mélenchon, by the way, he's very he's like Francis Bernie. And he said in no uncertain terms, like, I'm voting for Macron. You should vote for Macron, too. And no way Marine Le Pen should get in there. And so... Their Bernie is doing a similar thing that our Bernie here did, and we'll see how that affects the race. But as you can see from the article I showed you, I mean, the students are, you know, they don't like the lesser evilism shit either, and um, they're protest because they don't like the two candidates. So there, it's very, it's amazing how much this mirrors U.S. politics. But we have a precedent, again, where it could go either way. But as of right now, Macron does have a lead, and... I guess we'll see soon what happens. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.